Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. The humid swampy forests of Alter Earth Fayum, Egypt, were less heavily affected by the Endiocene extinction event than were similarly aged sites in neighbouring Eurasia. A relatively brief drying event occurred at the turn of the Oligocene, which led to the extinction of several larger dinosaurian genera in the region. The casualties included the enormous titanosaur Geb, alongside the macro-predatory abelisaur Teratotaurus. However, within a few million years, North Africa returned to a vast tract of subtropical marshland interspersed with drier open woodlands in areas further from watercourses. The animal groups that dwelt here were rather different from those found in Eurasia and North America, being a complex mixture of older African endemics and immigrant taxa originating from limited exchanges with Europe and Asia. Indeed, this faunal assemblage defined the Paleogene in Africa and has come to be known as NAPF, the North African Paleogene Fauna. Spanning from the early Paleocene to the late Oligocene, NAPF was comprised of African titanosaurs, large predatory abelisaurs, adaptable and bizarre noosaurians, a ragtag group of smaller iguanodontian ornithopods and hadrosaurs of European origin. Later arrivals from Asia first appeared during the latter part of the Eocene, including the first cenodromiosaurs and thessalosauroids. Mammal faunas were more strongly endemic, with pseudafrotherian placentals, multituberculates, and, most surprisingly, specialised eutraconodonts being common finds. Nilotherium was a member of the latter, being a relatively large otter-like piscivorous animal. Unlike otters, this genus possessed a set of elongated jaws and would have resembled a small furry crocodile if we were to see it alive. Although eutraconodonts such as this survived in Africa, while their northern cousins died out during the late Cretaceous, this did not spare them from a great deal of evolutionary competition. The arrival of placentals and metatherians during the Paleocene pushed African neutriconodonts into increasingly specialised niches, including gliding arboreal hunters and large fossorial forms. By the Oligocene, their numbers and diversity were beginning to fall away, presaging a more significant decline during the faunal exchanges of the early Miocene. By the end of the period, these animals would essentially be replaced by hypercarnivorous metatherians of Eurasian origin, although not all would go down quietly. At early Oligocene Fayum, only a single genus of metatherian has been recovered, the Afrodelphimorph Medumodelphis. This small, likely nocturnal omnivore, known only from jaws and teeth, seems to have been arboreal. Given the appearance of modern members of the clade, we should imagine Medumodelphis as an opossum-like, long-tailed generalist. Many of Fayum's smaller or more generalised animals survived into the Oligocene, with some of the same genera present across the boundary. The low-browsing iguanodontian ornithopods persisted with much of their numbers intact, inhabiting the niche of small, fast herbivores. These ornithopods were not closely related to any of their ecological analogues from Eurasia and North America, instead being phylogenetic cousins of the South American Elasmerians and the Rhabdodontids. Arriving on a continent with its own native ornithischian faunas, Rhabdodontians in Africa began to diversify into rather unusual niches. An example of this trend were the Zolingosaurids, a relatively basal family of bizarre high-browsing herbivores that in some ways mimic the lifestyle of therizinosaurs or nothrosaurids. Standing with an unusually vertical posture for an ornithischian, these stocky bipeds possessed enlarged and powerful forelimbs tipped with large hooked claws. These were utilised in pulling down branches in order to browse on succulent foliage, and also to defend these slow-moving animals from predators. Indeed, with their upright bipedal posture and lumbering gait, the Zolingosaurids resembled vintage dinosaur artwork produced in the first half of the 20th century, hence their family name, so called to honour influential Russian-born artist Rudolf Zolinga. At Fayum, these are represented by the rare Wabisaurus, a 5 metre high browser and relatively basal genus. The family as a whole ranged from the Middle Eocene to the Miocene, remaining endemic to Africa. Larger herbivores were represented by titanosaurian sauropods and hadrosaurs. Two genera of titanosaurs were found at the early Oligocene sites, which include the high-browsing Eusrisaurus, a genus that survived the Eocene-Oligocene transition, and the unusual wide-bodied Burketa titan. B. isis was another endemic oddball, 
being an early member of the distinctly African family Gombesauridae. These animals were closely related to the late Cretaceous genus Mansurosaurus, with Burkitta Titan being a part of the specialised subfamily Afrohyliospondylinae. Superficially diplodocid like, the subfamily tends to be low browsers with elongated narrow skulls and wide flaring bodies. Many were also rather modestly sized by titanosaur standards, weighing up to 20 tons at most. Hadrosaurs, much like the Rhabdodontians, entered North Africa from Southern Europe during the late Cretaceous. Interestingly, these were descendants of Lambiosaurine ancestors, being among the last representatives of this hadrosaur line. Indeed, these animals thrived in Africa, while their cousins in the Northern Hemisphere became largely extinct by the end of the Eocene. Alongside them lived a much smaller family of more basal hadrosauroids, typified by the 3.5 meter paludicursor. This was an obligate bipedal cursorial herbivore, and one of the smallest hadrosauroids that ever lived. The animal inhabited a niche similar to that taken by the Ziphosaurids of Eurasia and the Presidioceratids of North America. Preying on these herbivores was the large abelisaur Sargosaurus, a 9 meter apex predator and close relative of the even more massive late Eocene genus Teratotaurus. Abelisaurs such as this were the largest carnivores in Paleogene Africa, hunting sauropods and the larger hadrosauroids. Unlike some late Cretaceous South American members of this group, African abelisaurs did not become cursorial. Instead, genera like Sargosaurus possessed heavy builds adapted for power and hit-and-run ambushes enabled by short bursts of speed. Meanwhile, their distant cousins, the Noosaurians, were adaptable omnivores, filling niches taken in Eurasia by Troodontans and Oviraptorosaurs. Mid-sized carnivorous niches were filled by Cenodromiosaurs, relatively recent arrivals from Asia, first appearing in Egypt during the late Eocene, and also Notosuchians, including the Sebekids and Iberosuchids. The former were robust terrestrial ambush hunters that dominated the medium-sized carnivore niches in Africa throughout the Paleogene, effectively pushing smaller theropod dinosaurs into more unusual or marginal niches. The Iberosuchids function similarly to their larger cousins, albeit possessing longer limbs and more modest overall sizes. However, despite their success, these groups did not fare particularly well, as the tropical forests that had once covered the continent throughout the Paleogene began to break up during the Oligocene. The faunal exchanges of the early Miocene would deliver a heavy blow to these animals, although they persisted into the late Miocene and Pliocene respectively. One sea becket, the 4 metre Amutasuchus, and an Iberosuchid, the 1.5 metre Sepulchrosuchus, were present at early Oligocene Fayum alongside a couple of genera of true crocodilians that would not have looked out of place in the Holocene of our world. These were semi-aquatic, with the crocodiloid Horosuchus and the gavialid Egyptogavialis inhabiting inland freshwater rivers and swampland. The dirosauroid Brandolisesuchus dwelt in brackish, shallow coastal waters and mangrove swamps. Thanks for watching everyone. Next episode we'll be covering the Poposauroids, a distinctive lineage of mostly bipedal Triassic Pseudosuchians. See you again soon. Cheerio.